everyone and welcome to action rpg build guide edition today i'm ready to drop on you my updated and refreshed golem mancer we are now easily over 200 corruption and have a lot more survivability inside of this build as always i will show you every single facet of this build everything is time stamped in the description below if you need to bounce around let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Starting off with some gameplay. Now the skills I'm using for this Golem Mancer are Summon Skeletal Mage and we are specced into Death Knights and this is going to be our Transplant ability. Dreadshade, Summon Wraith in their permanent form, Summon Bone Golem, which we have three of, and Summon Volatile Zombie. This is built upon Melee, Necrotic, and Physical. So let's take it for a spin. Corruption 200 plus. I think right now it's at like 219, 220. And damage output and survivability is a lot higher than the older version. Also in the older version, we had to spec into skeletons to get our third golem. And we no longer need to do that. We have three golems and we have permanent wraiths, which are our strongest minion. So you got a big army cruising with you. And I'm sorry, I know I run like molasses. I've got a good pair of boots, but there's no movement speed on it. It's okay, we can use our mage to traverse quickly. And as you can see, for the most part, my life is staying nice and full. And I will show you why. All right, that was quick. Let's do another one. And we're off. Now, normally, once I finish a build guide, I will strip it and immediately start working on something new. That is not going to be my plan for this one. I'm going to keep this build intact, and I'm going to continue work on the gear for it and see how high corruption we can push. It's also just fun to play. And it is good anytime someone needs some help somewhere, I could easily jump in with a build. Come on, minions. Everything just disintegrates around you. So many little melee fighters. Get him, get him. And again, for over 200 corruption, you will notice that my life does not ping pong that often. For the most part, it stays pretty high. You did. Let's fight a Shade of Oribus. Let's do this Shade of Oribus. Come on, jump out. Got an army waiting. Light him up! 230 stacks for a second there of armor shred on him. Just destroyed. Let me show you how to recreate this build. Now let's check out the skills for this Golem Mancer. And what I'm going to do is show you the route you want to go first when you are building out the skill. So pay attention. You want to go up first. Five points into Forceful Commander. Four into Daunting Blast. One into Ravenous. Two into Pull of the Grave. And one into Horrific Vessels. This is what turns it into a necrotic damage. This is why your zombies are green. You then want to go down and to the right. One into Path of Destruction. Two into Fervor and one into Vital Ward. This is gonna give you a burst of ward every single time one of your zombies dies. Then you wanna come down into the left, one into Army of Rot, one into Vomit, and four into Corrosive Guts. This is where you get a ton of armor shred from your zombies. Now, as of right now, I have 23 points into zombie. So if you have only 20, you wanna pull three points out right here into Daunting Blast and you could still cover all of the notes. Moving over to Summon Wraith. You wanna go down right here first. One point into Locus of the Resurrection, two into Haunting, 
one into twin spirits and three into SOA. Then you want to come up. Actually, you are required to come up. Five into Reapers, three into Necrotic Hunger, one into Wraithbringer, one into Spirit Link, and three into Dawn of the Fall. Now, you have a couple options when it comes to Wraith. Okay, these three points, Dark Scythe, these are the last three points I put in, and this is going to give my Wraith 30% more attack speed. Now, I was struggling to keep my Wraiths alive, and then I had to restructure this tree a little bit. On right here, Hunger, you're going to get Necrotic Health Leech. And right here, Dawn of the Fall, you're going to get Crit Damage Health Leech. So really what you want is your Wraiths hitting really fast and then critting and leeching to stay alive. If you feel like your Wraiths are doing totally fine, you can pull these three points out and put it right here under my head. Dusk of the Living, this would give you 90% increased Crit Strike Multiplier. So they're going to hit way harder. Also, you could take points and put it right here into Grave Reality, which is going to give you 80% more life, okay? The way I have it set is the way I like it, but ultimately, if you want those huge crits, I would take Dusk of the Living. All of them are going to work pretty good. Moving over to Summon Bone Golem, our big old tank. What you want to do is come right first, and you want to take 5 into AOR, 4 into Unnatural Speed, and 5 into Hunger. This is a huge sustain for you. You will have three golems and every single time they hit, they are going to generate life for you and for themselves. Then you want to come to the left, five into AOS, four into Tower of Bones. This is going to generate a lot of threat, so the enemies are going to target your golem and not you. And then I had two leftover points. I put it over here into AOP, which is going to give you an armor boost to all of your minions. Now, if you don't really care about these two points, no big deal. You can go down here into melee damage and stun. However way you want to do it, those two points are freely for you. Moving over to Summon Skeletal Mage. You want to go left first so you can use them as a teleport. You want one into Splinter Dominion, four into Speed, two into Frenzy, one into Arcania, one into Passage, and three into Death's Calvary. This is going to allow you to teleport. One of the best teleports, if not the best movement speed, uh, skill in the game, and take nine minions with you. You then want to come to the right, three into Leech Life, one into Death Knights. This is what's going to turn them into necrotic hitters. Then you want to come down, five into Cellar Mortis, one into Order of Death, and three into Grey Merchant. This skill is your bread and butter. Last but not least, Dread Shade. What you want to do with Dread Shade is come down first. Three into Spectral Presence, one into Lone Watcher, three into Dying Coven, and four into Grim Fate. Then you want to come down and get four points into Lingering Doom. Then you want to go left, one into Wisdom of Death, and one into Martyrdom. And the last three points go into Flesh Harvest. Moving over to passives, and right now my Necromancer is level 100, so we are maxed out in our passive points. Starting in Acolyte, you want eight points into Forbidden Knowledge, eight into Stolen Vitality, five into Dark Rituals, and one into Soul Aegis. Moving over to Necromancer, which has the remaining 91 points. 8 into Risen Army, 10 into Cursed Blood, 8 into Aegis Fall. 1 into Blood Armor, 10 into Mortal Tether, 1 into Unbound Necromancy, 2 into Dark Retribution. This is where we get our Skeleton Vanguards, which believe it or not, I've done a couple runs with only Vanguards. They're actually pretty strong. I think you'd be surprised. And then you just want to go around your wheel. So you want 3 into Tyrant, 1 into Tyrant's Legion. 5 into Frantic Summons, 5 into River of Bones, 8 into Heresy, 3 into Blades of the Forlorn, 10 into Rite of the Undeath, 10 into Moonlight Pyre, 1 into Discipline of the Necromancy, and 5 into Veins of Malice. Now, if you have no mana regen whatsoever, no mana regen on your gear, you can pull 5 points out right here of Heresy and 5 points out of Mortal Tether, and you could put those 10 points right here into Apo which is going to give you 10 intelligence and 20% increased mana regen. I don't recommend going this route. I recommend putting mana regen on your belt. But if you don't have that, put those 10 points right there. Those are the passive. Moving over to everyone's favorite gear, starting with idols. And don't forget to check out the advanced build planner if you want to see true, true end game. If you can get anywhere close to that, you would be insane. Now, there's no idols that are required for this build. I stacked life and resistances, mainly lots and lots of life. But you do want to find one large idol that has percent to life and minion chance to apply Mark of Death on hit. And even though this rolled with only a 3%, which is the lowest, 
even at 3%, having so many minions, that 3% is going to trigger all the time. So it really doesn't matter what role you get on it. Just make sure you have minion chance to mark on uh, death on hit. Okay, moving over to gear. Now, what we're going to look at first is the required uniques. Okay, the required uniques. Now, my new unique to the game, Aaron's Will, is required because you cannot make multiple golems unless you have this item. On top of that, this item is only going to give you one added golem. You need two hollow fingers and the two points in the passive tree. One right here and one right here. So these two passive points, two hollow fingers and Aaron's will to be able to make three golems. OK, that is how you do it. Unless you have an Aaron's will and you transfer over plus one to maximum skeleton, then you only need one hollow finger. OK, so those are the uniques. Now, a newcomer to this build, which has just been a game changer, is mandate. OK, and I was able to transfer over a tier six high rolled minion melee damage to this mandate. It's going to give you minion necrotic penetration. Obviously, on this version, it's going to give you 341 minion melee damage. It's going to give you plus two to skills, and it's going to give you life. Lots of life leech, which we'll talk about in the sustain portion. Now, I'm going to go through each item one at a time. Helmet, life resistance, summon bone golem, amulet, minion, minion resistance, belt, Minion damage, mana, life, life. This is where I'm getting my mana regen. All you need is one affix. Intelligence, life, resistance, summon skeletal mage. Boots, intelligence, vitality, life, life. And gloves, minion, minion, life, life. My gear is pretty solid on this Golem Mancer. Now, I want to go through three normal uniques you will see on a Necromancer, especially Zoo style that I am not using. Logi's Hunger. This is focused on fire, so we are not going to use this. Death's Rattle, I played with this a lot. This does actually have perfect synergy with the build. The problem with Death's Rattle is your minions take 17% increased damage. And I noticed that that increased damage taken, I was struggling a little bit to keep my minions alive. So I made the decision to actually pull Death's Rattle. But if you are having no problem with your minions staying alive, you can absolutely use Death's Rattle. And last but not least, Raven's Rise. Raven's Rise boosts minion spell skills. So it's only going to give you plus two on your zombie and golem and nothing else. So this these, these gloves are good, but I don't need the resistances. I don't need the minion spells. So really all I'm getting is less damage taken and minion speed. So if you don't have a good pair of of exalted gloves you could use raven's rise but it synergizes a lot better with fire necro my gloves gave me resistances life health or minion health and life life with crit avoidance so in my case these was a, this was a much better pair of gloves that is the gear now let's break down the character sheet for our level 100 golem mancer intelligence right now 42 points vitality 29 movement speed 17 i'm gonna fix this movement speed our resistances are great. Void, necrotic, poison, physical, lightning, and fire are all basically max. Necrotic's almost there. Just need a little bit of tweaking with our cold resistance. But even there, we're at 58%. Armor, 526, 16. Ward re retention, 168. Looking at defense, our endurance and endurance threshold are solid. Crit avoidance is at 75. Now, my goal is when I'm tinkering with my gear, I need to get some cold resistance. Probably get it with my idols, honestly. And then one affix needs to be added for crit avoidance to get this over 100. I'll probably pull a base life affix out in the suffix spot and put in crit avoidance. Looking at minion right now, our overall minion damage is 633 minion melee 947 minion physical 693 and minion necrotic damage 583. The huge damage numbers from this build increase minion health 547. We are just getting started. Now let's talk about sustain. One thing with Necromancer that is tough is how to stay alive. And I've been really playing with this to make sure we can push higher corruptions level with this Golemancer. And there's a couple things that we've done. So when you look at the zombie tree, I have come down here and taken vital ward. Now this is not going to be a ward focused survivability build where you're going to be getting 20,000 ward. 
That being said, when you're in boss fights, when you're in large fights, when your zombies continue to explode, you will easily have anywhere from two to 800 ward. And I know that does not sound like a lot, but that's gonna be generating all the time. And again, it's about saving you from getting one shot, okay? So you're gonna have a little bit of ward almost the entire time you are playing. So there is that. Going over to Summon Bone Golem. We have fought five points into hunger. And remember, every single time your three golems hit, it is going to be giving you 65 life. So that's why I'm saying as long as your minions are hitting an enemy, you are going to be generating life all the time. On top of that, since we have switched to mandate, this is the main reason why I am using this two handed axe. 15% chance to gain 50 health on a minion hit. And unfortunately, this is a low roll. You can get this as high as 26%. Think about that for a second. All of your minions hitting with in crazy attack speed, you have a 15% chance that every one of those minions, there's no cooldown on this, are gonna generate you 50 life. And again, you can roll as high as 26%. On top of that, you can also get increased health per minion de death, and obviously your zombies are gonna be dying all the time. So by using mandate and using hunger on your golems and getting ward from your zombies, you are going to have so much more survivability. On top of that, looking at my build right now, 3,400 life. And then once again, what you just looked at, you'll have your life, you will have your resistances, you will have your endurance, endurance threshold and crit avoidance. I'm telling you, it's going to allow you to push a lot, lot further. Aaron, this sounds great. I want to make my own Golem Mancer, but I don't know how to do it. What would you recommend if I was level one? Let's talk about leveling up this beast. The first skill you want to take is Summon Skeleton, okay? And you want Summon Skeleton in its Archer's form. So the first thing you want to do is go left and take Unholy Rage, Guardian, and Mightier Than the Sword, which is going to remove warriors. Then come down here and take Conviction and Hollow Walkers. This is going to allow you to have multiple skeletons that are going to be ranged and shoot for you. The second skill you want to take is Summon Bone Golem. Okay, and you want to come down first into AOS and then four into Tower of Bones so that you have a big tank running around. And then you also want to take Fragments of the Fallen as well. Okay, so you got your Summon Skeletons that are shooting. You have your Bone Golem that is tanking. And you move over and grab Summon Volatile zom Zombie. And the first thing you want to do is go up and take this tree, giving you a kill threshold. So now you got your archer shooting, you got your golem tanking, and then you're doing tons of damage through your zombies and with having a kill threshold. Now, you also are going to have transplant, but transplant is going to be your movement skill and you're just going to place it on your bar. So even though I'm not specced into transplant, you could still put it there so you get a free movement skill. All right, so you've got your zombies, you've got your golem, and you have your summon skeletons. Now, once you unlock your mastery and you can actually go into Necromancer, you want to spec out of summon skeletons and spec in to summon skeletal mage. And here you want to actually go down first. You want to go down first and basically take another mage and then starts working towards getting your teleport with Skeleton Mage. So that means as you're traversing the campaign, if all of this makes sense, you have skeletons at the beginning, then you transfer into mages, then you have transplant on your bar for free, you're summoning zombies, and you are making bone golems. And the main weapon you want to look for is a Reach of the Grave. And remember that you could turn this into a legendary and it's not going to up the level requirement, which means you can use this at level five. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. What do you think of my new and improved Golem Mancer? Is there something I missed? Is there something I could do to push this to the next level? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Two asks at the end of the video. Ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day you yeah, make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it, but of course, only if you think I deserve it. If I don't deserve it, I'm going to work harder for you. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 88 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. I get asked all the time, Aaron, what is the best way to support? It truly is Patreon. 
Not only for as little as a dollar a month do you get all access to all the Patreon content, you have the ability to live stream audio and video with me, you get access to the VIP lounge, you get access to my studio tour for my exclusive VIP YouTube channel. Lots of goodies, first link in the description. That's all I've got, Golem Mancer. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out.